Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today we are working on the top of the headboard and footboard. Particularly, we're going to be making the corbels here. And these are what actually connect the top to the main structure, as well as we will be dimensioning the top and putting a very large camber on it. Uh, so this is a lot of fun, a lot of sliding dovetails and a lot of little detail pieces that have to go to make this together. So this is one of the big last steps in the bed. And it is one of those things that is, um, if, if done poorly, you run into issues. Uh, so let's actually talk about that as we get into it. But uh, yeah, dive into the video. So let's make us some corbels. And these are tiny little triangular things that go on the bottom side and they support the top. And in the mission slash arts and crafts and whatever these uh, designs are you, you'll find these quite a bit and they have a lot of different shapes and they're they're a fun way of uh, um, connecting one type to another and everyone had their own shape and their own design and their own feel and um, I like to just do a simple triangle. Um, I like the geometric feel to it. I think that fits the, the channel well, uh, as well as I, it is aesthetically pleasing to me. So I'm gonna start by making two triangles together and I need to square off one edge. And so you can see here, I'm marking which corner is square. And that way I know that is 90 degrees. And then I can draw corner to corner and that will be close to the line I'm going to cut on. But before going any farther, I actually wanna cut the dovetails on these because they're much easier to cut when it's in a rectangular form than it's in triangular form. Uh, when it's in triangle, it is very hard to grab. So it's easy just to cut a dovetail on all four sides of this first. So I'm gonna slice down at the edge one quarter inch in, and then come in with a chisel and just pop out the tail. And this step may scare a few people, but if you do it with a practice piece once or twice, you will be golden. There really isn't much behind this. It's just chopping it at a slight angle. And what that angle is really doesn't matter. Um, I tend to make mine pretty darn steep, and I, I could come back and, and uh, make them more shallow, um, but no particular reason to make any particular angle. Just uh, make it something that feels good. So once we go all the way around all four sides of this, then we can flip it over and do all four sides on the other side. <laughs> and on these small ones, I'm actually going to be dovetailing into both the leg and the top. On the, on the small one, on the large ones that we'll be doing later, I'm only gonna be dovetailing into the top. So since I have a dovetail on both sides, I need to come in with the saw and cut out the corner so that you have a dovetail running up the long side as well as on the top short side. And now we can slice this thing corner to corner. And so we just drew the line, grab the rip saw, and go on down it until the two lines meet. And there you go, you have a line running all the way down it corner to corner. Now there's always a little bit of fuzz or whatnot on the bottom or a place where the saw is met, met and they just need to be planed off. And so I will come in with my smoothing plane and bring them down. Um, in this case, I also have a line drawn on there at where I want them all to come in. Also, I'm going to cut off the dovetail uh, so it doesn't stick out because the dovetail comes all the way to the point and we don't need that. So break it off and then chisel it back and that way you don't have the dovetail slot sticking out past where you can see it. It'll make more sense once we actually cut the, the slot for the dovetail. So we can do this on both corners of the triangle and there we are left with our triangle that will be exposed as well as the dovetails that will be hidden in the leg and top of the, uh, of the frame. Corbels! Hey, those are kind of cool. <laughs> okay, now let's actually cut the uh, dovetailed slot for this. And uh, what, first thing I need to know is actually what the width of the slot is at the top because it's full width at the bottom, but at the top it needs to be smaller. So I can set that out with the, with the calipers and then mark off its exact width. And then I can come in with the marking gauge and lay out lines running all the way down. And so this is the thinnest point of the dovetail. Now we need to mark out how wide this is on the end, and so we can just set it in place and mark it with a knife. Now that we have those marked, we can come into the saw and do a, a decent amount of the, uh, the, the, the mark out stock removal. I guess we're not removing much stock, uh, but we're gonna cut down either side. Now, if you wanna see more detail on how to make sliding dovetails, I did a live recently where I went through this entire thing um, step by step and, and did it all live so you could see everything that went into it. It's not that complicated of a step. And once you cut down with either side, it's just about chiseling it out, slicing away, test the fit. Um, and once it slides in a certain amount, don't remove anything from that area where it slid out and just dig deeper, farther down. And keep going until it is a slot running all the way down. 
Now getting into the corners all the way at the end, I find using a router is very useful, as well as flattening out the whole slot. It works really well and is a fun thing. Oh, and I get to use my dovetail chisel on dovetails, or some people call it a fishtail chisel. I don't know why they call it a fishtail chisel when it's used on dovetails. Eh, weird. Uh, but this will actually reach into the corners beautifully and, and clean them out, make everything really nice and sharp. Once that's done, then we can test the fit and make sure that it slides in just the way we like it. All the way down to the bottom. Pop. There we go, nice and happy. So there it is into the leg, and now we need to cut it into the top. But before we do that, we actually need to create the top. Um, I have the rough board, but I need to joint all the edges and cut it to full length. So I'm gonna grab my number seven and go at jointing this down. And I believe on this side it was uh, cupped, so there was a valley in the middle, so I'm taking off a little either end and planing it down until I get a shaving from one end to the other. And occasionally you can check it with your eye and make sure that everything is just right. Um, it is amazing how much your eye can actually see and lets you know, hey, I got a problem there. Uh, I use a homemade paste wax on my sole. I find it works really well and allows the plane to slide, especially with large surfaces like this. It works really well. And now we can cut it to length. Measured it out, put a mark, squared it off, and started cutting. Now usually I use a larger panel saw to cut these and it works really well, but in this case for some reason I decided to grab my carcass saw and away we went. And uh, The carcass saw is, I have it set up for a very clean, easy cut, um, so if any time I want to finish it off I, I, I use the carcass saw to get that finished cut on there. Now we're going to put the leg on there and transfer the marks from the dovetail slot that we just made onto the board. And this lets us know precisely where the dovetail needs to be on the top as well. So we can transfer those marks from there, square it off, and use this to then draw the edges of the dovetail slot all the way down. Then just like before, it is the same thing over again. Mark the ends and show the dovetail on there. Come in with the saw and cut it down. I need to make sure at this point not to go too far because we can see the end of this is that will actually be the front edge of the, uh, of the top. Slice either side, and then I put a third cut right down the middle. It makes it easier to remove the stock out. You can see how the chips pop out much easier rather than getting jammed in the dovetail. Then continue to chop in, pair out, chop in, pair out. You may have heard this before. It's something I say quite a bit. <laughs> Clean it out with the router, do some detail work, test it and check it, test it and check it. Um, we're going to be making a whole bunch of these. We're going to end up making, uh, what, 20 dovetail slots. So once it's fit and, and the way it needs to be, we have one corbel dovetailed into the top, and now we can use that to lay out where all the others need to be. Speaking of all the others, we need to actually make the others. Now the two that go into the legs are smaller. They're only about three inches long. Uh, but there are three that go in the main body, and those I believe are five inches long. And so they're a slightly different design, and then these only get dovetailed into the top. They just go into a regular uh, dado in, the, uh, in the, the main frame of the body. So we can use the saw, cut these down at an angle, and every time we cut them, we get two happiness. Again, plane them off, and we're ready to start working on uh, these as well. Now in the main body, they go through the top stretcher, and they stick down a little bit into the vertical. And you see how that uh, fits down in there. I kind of like that look of it breaking up that line on the arch. Um, it, there's just something about that that's aesthetically pleasing to me. Uh, though some people in the past have made doved, have made the corbels slightly different lengths so that they stop at the arch. Um, different strokes for different folks. I needed to smooth up the surface a little bit. The verticals were ever so slightly proud. So a couple passes, passes with the plane, then card scraper, and we are good to go. And it is the same thing over again. Um, lay out the lines, except for in this case, rather than cutting a, a dovetail, we're just cutting a, a simple groove. And because it's stopped, it's easier to come in and chisel it rather than sawing all the way down. So I saw at a slight angle. It's only an eighth inch deep, so it goes pretty easily. And then we can chop in on either side and pair out. And this pairing out is really fun, especially when you go cross grain and you can see these really heavy curls coming out. <laughs> it's really happy. And uh, just like with the dovetail, it's easy to bring in the router, clean it out, smooth it down, and we have a slot that is ready to go. Just need to test it and make sure that everything works. You can see how this just pounds in and voila, it is fitting perfectly. So we can put in the corbels on all of the mainframe, but now we need to actually transfer the marks to the top. So we have one corbel in here, 
and we can transfer all the marks from that one, including the corbel on the other leg. And this way we know that they line up perfectly with reality. We're not just measuring and then transferring the measurements over, we're actually transferring the exact marks over. Now with that in case, then we can start laying out all of our dovetails on the underside of the top board. And it's gonna be the exact same thing we've done before. Um, lay them out, make sure that the mark on the top matches the thinnest section of the dovetail. Draw those lines across, keep them nice and square, make sure, making sure that the corbel is nice and square. And then we can come in with a saw and cut at an angle. And we will cut either side all the way down. And, uh, oh, and uh, I bring in the marking gauge to mark the total depth. Um, and I have that marking gauge at a quarter inch. Um, so all of these dovetails are cut one quarter inch deep. Well, normally you would see that dovetail on the front edge of the top. Uh, but what I'm going to do is put a large chamfer all the way around the front edge and that chamfer is going to come up a quarter inch so that when you're looking at them from the front you can't actually see the dovetails. So it's a, an interesting way of hiding them um, and it's something I've done on a few projects and I, I really enjoy it. It's uh, just an easy way to, to make things um, a little bit different and I, I, I don't know of, I know of one other person who does that um, but it's a, a fun thing that I like. So once we have these all in place, we can drive in the corbels, make sure that they fit in the top. And now it's time to actually do that chamfer I was talking about. So we're gonna draw a line a quarter inch in, and I want that chamfer to come down to that quarter inch line, and that will end up hiding those dovetail slots. Using a scrub plane to take off the majority of the material um, it goes really quickly. And you can get it close to that line. You can see I'm just kind of spot hitting, because uh, the grain on this is, is undulating quite a bit, so I don't want to take off anything too much. Then I can bring in the jack plane and bring it down really close to that line. Um, I don't really care a whole lot about what this angle is because you really can't feel it. I just, I'm, I'm more or less eyeballing the feel of the angle to be about that much. So it comes down a quarter inch and then goes in about three quarter inch. And I'm going to do this on all four sides all the way around just to make it match. So the top, it makes it light, a little bit lighter, makes it a little bit thinner, and you end up seeing about a half inch on the top. And I just kind of like the way you can see how that, that fits into the, the dovetail slots. And now we can slide it all in place. Um, with the two dovetails on the end, we can pop those up into place. And then we can slide the corbels down in the middle and make sure that those then fit into the grooves and dados on the top frame. So that's about it. I, I have this one done for this video. I'm going to do the top of the main one off video because it's the exact same process and there's no reason to show that twice. Um, but it's making all five corbels and adjusting the top plate and making it all fit. And we're getting down close to it. So hopefully next time we'll be doing the main beams that go between the headboard and footboard. Um, and then after that, it's gonna be finishing and we're getting close to it. So I'm really getting excited about this. Um, I hope you are too. If you have any questions or ideas, um, concerns, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear those. Um, and I do try and uh, answer as many questions as possible. So I hope you like this video and I'm really looking forward to getting this series done. It's coming and it should be here soon. If you did like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share specifically. Those really do help out the channel. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So it's about that time I'm going to pull out this book and we're going to go, uh, what's the difference between a high hit baseball and a maggot's father? Well, one's a pop fly and the other's a fly's pop. <laughs> I love this book. Yeah. <laughs>